Hello, everybody. That's Josh from uh, Shelter Harbor Golf Club. We're continuing our cooking series today, uh, cooking lessons at Shelter Harbor Golf Club. Today, I'm going to show you three different sauces that I like to do in the summertime. Uh, it will up your barbecue game uh, exponentially. Uh, you won't just have to use barbecue or uh, canned salsa. You're going to learn a couple little sauces that each work with different proteins. And uh, I hope you learned something to have fun today. That's what I'm here for. Anyways, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a blueberry one. Uh, very similar to what we did last year with the seared tuna. I don't have any corn, but it's just going to be a simple blueberry relish. Um, I use the word relish, but it's not going to be like pickle relish that you get on your hot dogs. It's not sweet and salty and spicy. It's, it's, it's very nice. After that, we're going to move into an olive and um, basil kind of. A, it's it's, a, it's a, like a play on a tapenade almost. It's not so puree, but it has all those Mediterranean flavors, and it goes really well on grilled pork chops or some seared salmon. And then after that, the last thing I'm going to finish off with is chimichurri, which goes awesome on um, steak or grilled lamb or something that's really full-bodied like that. That's what we're looking for. So anyways, I'm going to start off with the blueberry. And um, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to wash up these herbs. When you buy herbs at the grocery store, they may seem like they're clean, but you never really know what's going on. Um, for this purpose, I'm using a, uh, a bain-marie that's filled with ice-cold water. There's no ice in there, but it's extremely cold. Any type of bucket would be fine, and you want to dunk it in there and pull it out, and dunk it in there and pull it out, and dunk it in there and pull it out, probably three times or so. And then I give it a gentle shake in there, and you might have to go outside, but I have the nice kitchen floor in here, so I just go like this, and I get all the water out of it like that. You can do it over the sink if you want to, or you can go out on the deck. I don't want you to get in trouble with your spouse. Um, after we shake it out, I'll take it and I'll rip it like that, and I will get the herbs like so, and then I'll go through them, and some herbs you can use some of the stems, such as uh, cilantro, but parsley, you really just want to pick off the leaves, all the little plushes like that. So I'm going to pick these out and lay them out to dry. So I'm just about finished picking these parsley leaves, and um, what I'm doing right now is I'm picking them, like I said, to get the stems off there, and I'm laying them out on a towel, a nice dry towel, and when they're all finished being picked, I'll place another towel on top of that and wrap it up. And what it'll do is it'll take out all the excess moisture. And you really want to do that because with these herb sauces that we're making, they're not pureed. They're all, it's all knife work. And if you don't have dry herbs or have a sharp knife, you're going to wind up with, uh, you know, long clippings for lack of a better, you know, something that Mike winds up without on the golf course. You know, you really want to have dry herbs and a nice sharp knife, and it'll make your herbs really pop and look beautiful. So after I've picked them all, like I said, I'm going to wrap them in this towel here. I'm going to let them sit for a minute to dry. And then I'm going to do a couple other things while I'm waiting for those to dry. Also in this dish, you'll find we have some English cucumber. And I'm going to teach you a couple tricks that we use here in, the, in our kitchen and a lot of professional kitchens do. We're going to fillet out these cucumbers because we're really looking for the texture that the outer, outer edge of the cucumber has as well as the, um, you know, uh, it's just more, we're looking for the texture and not so much of the water of, of the, the pithy inside. Uh, these are great snacks. I mean, you can always eat them. That's the cook's delight right there. But for this purpose, we're going to flay them out. And what you wind up with is a nice little piece like that. And then we'll take those and we'll dice them down. And we're doing all this dice work like this because you want to, um, you want to make everything bite size. You're putting this on top of, you know, this would probably go great on top of a piece of, uh, seared tuna or, you know, uh, some scallops, even a piece of grilled swordfish. Um, so it's going right on top of the fish and it's not getting pureed at all. So you really want to make sure you have nice, delicate dices that all meet the same criteria and they're all the same size. You don't want to have, um, you know, any, anything monstrous in there. It's also handy to have refuse spins around when you're doing all this work. You never know what you're going to need and to keep constantly opening up a garbage can can be kind of tedious after a while. The parsley over here is in great shape. I'm going to take a handful of that, put it on the board. Um, one of the things, like I was saying with the herbs, is you really want to make sure that you don't beat them up. And that's, that's probably something that is very natural for someone just to go at it with a knife like that as hard as they can. Um, so one trick I learned a long time ago at school was if you take them and you can ball them up as tight as you can, because you really want to make as few passes as possible through them, not to abuse them. So you ball it up as tight as you can, and you take your knife, you make long strokes and go through, and you're kind of like chiffonading there right now. 
And you know the shift and cut. We use it on uh, the basil when we garnish your pastas when you come in for dinner in the restaurant. So you go through it on one end, and then you bring it back together all nice and tight again, and you go through it on the other end. And ideally, you should have it to the point where you need to make three or four passes. That way you're not really beating up your herbs at all. So I have a nice clean bowl that I'm going to mix in here. I'm going to start out. I'll throw my parsley right into that. I have halved blueberries. These blueberries were on the smaller side, so some were halved and some are left actually whole. Um, one of the things you might run into is you have really big blueberries, and you might have to quarter them. It all depends, but you really want to go for the same size cut on your blueberries, on your cucumber, and everything else that's going on here. I will add the blueberries at this point. I will add some of the diced cucumber that we have. I will add lime juice from half of a lime. I will add chives, probably a good pinch, pinch and a half. The same thing with chives is you want to line them up straight and just go through them and get a nice clean slice without pushing your knife down through them. You actually want to um, just slice right through them without using any pressure at all. You really want to have a nice sharp knife for that. And here's some fresh cilantro that was already been washed, it's similar to the parsley, and I'm going to chop that up and add it as well. To this mixture, I will add some red pepper flakes. I really prefer to use these because the, the black pepper has a tendency to muddle things out and give everything a uh, gray kind of appearance. I'll add some salt, a good pinch of that. Because remember, nothing in this bowl is seasoned at all yet. And it's a lot of, you know, cucumbers are watery, blueberries don't have any salt to them. So we need to add a good healthy dose of seasoning. And this is a balsamic syrup. Uh, you can buy white balsamic syrup. You can also make balsamic syrup by reducing down it. And another little trick that works really well is you can do, uh, you can take a, a bit of honey and put it in a bowl and stir balsamic into it until it's thick, but it still tastes like balsamic isn't too sweet and doesn't taste too much like honey, you know, it's a combination of both. So I'll add some of that in there. And what this really does, the fact that it's a syrup like that, is it really makes this product nice and gooey and uh, it really holds together. It's not going to be watery on your plate, which is important. I will also add some extra virgin olive oil, probably about a tablespoon to this. Give it a good stir or two, and we are ready to taste. And there you have it. Well, what you're really looking for is balance in everything. You know, a good vinaigrette is balanced. It has acid and oil. And same thing. You can think of these as being vinaigrettes almost in a way. Not all the way, but just in, in, a, in a simple way to think about it is that, you know, you should get a little bit of the vinegar, the oil kind of carries everything, the nice flavors to it. But you should taste every component of it as well. Like you should taste the blueberry. You should be able to taste the cucumber. You should be able to taste the herbs. If it's all pushing in one direction or pulling in another one, you've done it wrong. And you can adjust it. You know, if you just taste cucumber, add more blueberries to it. If you just taste uh, vinegar, add a little more oil to it. And you can see how it's really sticky. It's, it's very syrupy. It's not loose at all, which is really what we're looking for. That's perfect.